HistoryIn2.com. Welcome back to the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is Rick Smith. So we're seeing the calls. You've got uh, South Carolina Congressman James Clyburn, uh, who's saying, you know, now's the time for the DNC to shut everything down. Shut it all down. It's over. Biden's won. Um, I think that could be the most idiotic thing to do at this moment. It's truly. I mean, if you want to lose in November, and this is the thing that's just an amazing to me and how tone deaf it seems to me uh, that that we get from from the Democratic establishment. To, well, shut it down. Shut it down now. Because it's over, you know. You know, Bernie can't win. Uh, it's over. Shut it down. You want to, you want to lose all of those uh, Sanders supporters? Try an idiotic move like shutting it down prematurely right now and not allowing voters to cast their votes in the coming weeks. Do that. That would be the greatest thing that you could do for Donald Trump come November, uh, because you know all those Bernie supporters who are a little, still a little, a little, you know, not happy. That would just that would just send them completely. You want to lose the next generation for the next generation? Do that. Uh, but here to share some thoughts on the Super Tuesday two results. Uh, what happened in Michigan? And, and again, not surprising uh, the results that we saw so far. I've asked our good friend Bob Wiener to come talk with us. Bob's the president of Re- Wiener Associates News. He was also a former spokesperson for the Clinton and the Bush White Houses. White Houses. Uh, he's he's been like the guy for almost everybody in D.C. for almost ever. Uh, that's why we're we're glad to have him. Bob, thanks for taking time for us. <laughs> Rick, thanks. Well, hey, nice of you to say, but what you do for labor and and for getting the truth out is amazing on your show. So thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I'm looking at this this. James Clyburn right now, and uh, you know I'm sure you know him. Uh, I'm sure you Very respect well. him. Uh, this is the most idiotic thing that I've heard. Yeah, I, I think what he did uh, for Biden was amazing, though. Yep. In incredible. Carolina. The most 50%. incredible 100 hours uh, yeah. in, in my political life. I mean, they really pulled it off. And uh, it, he really was kingmaker, and I, I, I thought that he should be the cover Time magazine with his picture saying kingmaker. There's never been an endorsement as significant, the respect that he has. The polling showed that half, half of all the voters in, in Carolina said that uh, Clyburn's endorsement was a major factor and the reason for them voting uh, for Biden. And then Biden pulled it off and, and kept the momentum going, and the way that he, he parlayed what happened in South Carolina in the rest of uh, Super Tuesday, yep. and then, of course, uh, yesterday, was totally amazing. No, I mean, you know, from South Carolina forward, I mean, they orchestrated what were fantastic moves. And, I, and I've and i been telling my my fellow Bernie supporters, you know, you didn't get cheated. The, the game wasn't rigged. This is how the game is played. You just didn't play it better. They yeah, played it's better. not the establishment. Uh, Bernie keeps saying, you know, and I like Bernie, by the way. What he, his perspective on things is, is really sharp, and he's right that the issues uh, are, are largely formed, formed by what he did. But uh, he can't blame the, the establishment. It, it is the, the voters that voted. It, it isn't the establishment that, that ganged up on him. Yeah, but you know, to be honest, they did play the game better. Uh, Biden's people just played it much better. They lined up the, the endorsements. Right. Uh, you, 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 you had Buttigieg, you had Amy uh, Klobuchar. Right. You know, look, if, if the, the progressives could have lined it up, Elizabeth Warren on Monday afternoon would have endorsed Sanders for Tuesday before Super Tuesday. And, and that would have given them a shot. It was never going to happen. But if they were playing the same game, and they're clearly not, uh, that's what they would have done. Well, I don't think Warren wanted to do that. Of course not. And I, I think the reason is because she really wants to defeat Trump. And, and when she realized that Biden was, was swelling with support and, and the country was, was overwhelmingly moving toward uh, him, that uh, she didn't want to just mess it up and, 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 and start having a fight in the Democratic Party for, uh, for a nomination that, uh, that now people have confidence for the first time uh, in about uh, three months uh, that uh, Biden really can make it and, and get there. That's the other thing, Rick, is that Biden was blowing it. Yeah. He was stumbling. He had, was running a bad campaign. He was fumbling in his, in his speeches. You could see Joe Biden standing next to him. 
And uh, when Biden said, in conclusion, in conclusion, in conclusion, in conclusion, and finally in conclusion, no, you no. know, when he did that five times in one speech that I watched, and Joe Biden just staring down, he actually found his voice and found himself after Clyburn endorsed him, and now he, is, he has gotten the energy and the second wind to, to be strong, and now people think he can beat Trump. No, no, and we'll see how this plays out, but here's the thing. This is the reason they want to cancel the debate. Uh, they don't want the stumbling. They don't want uh, the appearance of, of what, you know, what the campaign was doing prior to South Carolina. Uh, they, want to, they want to sweep all this down the road. Did I miss something? Has the debate been canceled? No, the, the, everybody's no. calling for it to be canceled. Oh, not everybody. everybody <laughs> I, let me put it this way. I, yeah. All of the people that I know who are, who are Biden supporters yeah. say it's over. The Clyborne, this is where Clyborne said, it's over. Cancel the debate. Yes, but I don't think that that's going to happen because I don't think Bernie wants that to happen. He wants to discuss the issues. Right. And you can't pee all Bernie. You cannot that to him, to his supporters. Uh, you, you can't... Uh, Make it where it, this is uh, no longer a valuable, uh, he's no longer perceived as a valuable piece of the party. Yep. And Bernie wants to get the issues out. And even Bernie is saying, it's not about me, it's about the issues. Well, when somebody, and, and, and uh, Krishna Morphy is his campaign chair, co chair, said the same thing. When people start saying that, you know they've conceded the game. Right. No, no, he has. And, it's, and I've been saying all this time, I'm still a Bernie supporter, but it's more about the issues. It's more about pushing Biden in yep. the direction that we want them to go instead of allowing him to move back to the center like politicians tend to do. Well, that's Not important. saying Biden's going to do it, but they tend to do that. Right. I, I totally agree with you yeah. on that. Uh, and uh, I think Biden has been moved, but the point is to make the center electable also. If, the, if, if, the, if what you're pushing is something that turns the American people off. And we all learned, every one of us, if we admitted, uh, was for Medicare for all, pure, simple, and really. Hey, guess what? We actually learned that the American people, most of them want to keep the health insurance that they have. And when Warren said people don't like their private, actually people do like their own health insurances. Pat likes hers, my wife, uh, at George Washington. I like mine with Kaiser. So if you like your health insurance, what you want is the provisions and the costs to come down. And the way to do that is to, is to fix Obamacare, keep the cost controls moving, but also give people a public option and let there be a Medicare for all virtual option uh, in, in, in health care for people that don't have it and, and want to move in that way and then gradually move in that direction. But, but if you want to keep the health insurance that you have, you can't have it taken out from under you. Yeah, no, and, and there's part of me that agrees with that, but I've yet to find that person who says they just love their health insurance company. Um, and, and most of the people that I know who, who would say they like it don't really use it much. Because uh, I'll tell you, I'm, I have great health insurance. I've got the best health insurance that you can possibly find anywhere in this country. Uh, I've got good, solid union Teamster health insurance. Yep. Uh, you know, I just had a hip replaced. It's going to cost me about 300 wow. bucks. Wow, that's Front, amazing. It's going to cost me about 300 bucks to get a hip good, replacement. Yeah, well, good luck with that. More than the cost, by the way. No, no, yeah, I, I've had a great experience. I'm doing really well. I'm thrilled. Yeah, okay. uh, I'm, in, I'm in no pain whatsoever. In fact, you know, the moment the surgery was over, I was in less pain than when I went in, uh, which is a good thing. But what I'm saying is, is I've yet to find those people who are so, so happy with their, their insurance when they use it. Because uh, most people I know have high deductibles. Most people I know have co-insurance and, and all kinds of stuff that you know, we shouldn't we shouldn't have to be dealing with. Uh, but, you know, here, it's over, right? The, the ACA, we're going to be strengthening that. I guess that's the angle, right? That is the tough choice that has to be made. Uh, and, I, Rick, I think you're not reading a lot of people correctly. Okay. Um, I love my Kaiser. And that's the point I was making. You and love Kaiser. Of, you love Kaiser Permanente. Uh, all I do is go to the doctor for everything, and I never spend more than ten or twenty bucks for a deductible, and that's it. No okay. matter what the process. When I traveled to Chicago and had something serious that had to be done, I called up, cleared it with Kaiser on the way, and they said no, you'd have to pay no more than a hundred dollars. Uh, then uh, when uh, I got this bill for seven thousand, I got on the phone with Kaiser. They said no. It's the hundred dollars, and then they got a bill from the hospital in Chicago for for three thousand dollars. And I tried one to each time Kaiser conferenced in with me, and fought with them, and then said ignore anything that they they try to get from you. And that hundred dollars of what I had to pay when I was abroad, uh, you know, in in Chicago, uh, that's it. That's all I wound up paying. A co a company that fights for you with you like that 
is something that you actually value. Yeah, you were in Chicago, right? That's still what? in the U.S., right? I Well, yeah, I was in Chicago at the time. That's not abroad. But, but I also, well, right. <laughs> I also do something very, I think, that people have to do, which is if you're about to have a health care procedure, you call your health insurance company and clear what the cost is going to be before you get it so right. that there's documentation and they can't tell you afterwards you're not entitled to it. All right. Well, you are officially the first person that I've met. <laughs> um, honestly, who said that they love their insurance company. Most other people are like, eh, I'm, I'm okay with it. I like it. It is, you know, it's, it's covered me when I needed it. It's really expensive. I pay a lot for it. Uh, I'd like it to be less, like you said. But you're the very first person who said, I love it. And then the other thing that Bernie did that, that hurt him was not being honest on the costs. Yeah. And that's the same thing that Cudlow, I couldn't believe yesterday. I'm watching Cudlow and we're going to do a payroll tax, and John Roberts asked him in the news conference, how much is it going to cost? Is it, isn't it going to be $1.1 trillion? And, and, uh, and where are you going to get the money for it? And Cudlow says, well, actually, I don't know. We're, we're going to figure that out later, and I'll get back to you. You know, that's just outrageous when, when he did that. And people don't like being, being conned on costs that are big that they're going to have to wind up paying through their taxes. No, I mean, Kudlow's point was, they, his point, what he meant, to, what he wanted to say but couldn't was, we don't care because the goal is to destroy Social Security anyway. Hey, so this is go. a win-win. Yeah. That's, that's uh, smart on your part to realize that. Yeah, so let's go to Michigan, uh, the, the reason I, I got you. I, were you surprised that Biden you know, swept through Michigan the way he did, uh, given that you know, Bernie had done so well in 2016? Oh. Well, I don't get surprised, and I won a $5 bet at the National Press Club by saying Biden was going to win by at least 15. That's what the polling showed. It looked scientific, and he won by 17. Uh, no, the, the Biden move, the surge, was real. You know, I was sorry, Rick, uh, that uh, you know, I didn't take verbatim. I was Conyers' uh, rep, you know, press director and, and director of the Government Operations Committee for him, uh, for, for media. And, uh, and I was with him at his 90th birthday, what, eight months ago, before he died. Uh, and uh, he said, I'm all in for Biden. And, uh, and uh, I, I wrote the whole thing up on, on everything he said, all the issues, which he was very strong on, and, uh, and included that. I wish I had done a press release on, on Conyers' deathbed endorsement of Biden. It might have been worth a point or two if we had gotten that out, and I thought of that after the fact. I was not surprised at all by uh, by. Biden winning Michigan or the other states, the surge is, is, is for real. Yeah, he was supposed to win the other states. I mean, I think I think most people— Michigan, too. The polling showed it. Yeah, I, I thought Michigan was the place where Bernie may have had a shot because of the trade issue. So, you know, I'm starting to re— But re tra trade, brick was, was countered by Biden, uh, Obama and Biden save the auto industry. That was the strong talking point that countered uh, the trade uh, talk. Yeah, but my problem is we're going to head back to neoliberal trade. And I, I'm struggling with, with looking at Pennsylvania, looking at Ohio, uh, you know, Wisconsin, you know, going back to those tra th that trade situation with Biden. I just, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I, I, I really worry about. Well, in every one of those states, uh, I, I know there's actually some things that Trump does, does right, and, you know. A broken clock works twice a day, right? So, uh, but uh, on 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 uh, Michigan, excuse me, on Wisconsin, on Pennsylvania, uh, the polling shows that not Trump is the issue, and that's what the election of 2019, the elections of 2018, everything has been states flipping, and 40 Congress seats going uh, no. against Trump, uh, and that's what the deal is now. Uh, I don't think there's a thing he can do. I think they're going to try to do Benghazi uh, on, you know, on, and make it uh, on Hunter Biden yep. this time. And then Biden's ready. He's going to say, you want to talk about sons and daughters? What about yours that are running around uh, getting profits and, and patents? And, and, uh, and what about Jared on, on 777 in New York? And what about the five bankruptcies that Russian banks paid? Uh, for, uh, paid you off with because no U.S. bank would. He's going to hit Trump with corruption uh, if if they go after his son, and he's going to fight back and he's going to fight back hard. And uh, I, I just don't think there's anything that the Republicans can do that that the American people aren't going to see as a con job this time. Boy, from from your lips, you know, I, I hope you're right. I hope that is what he's able to do. But you know, I'll tell you, the past debate performances haven't given me a lot of faith. 
Just saying. He was all right. He's gotten stronger and stronger. He's he? all right. He wasn't horrible. He walked onto the stage knowing, had to know. It would be political malpractice if he didn't know that uh, Kamala Harris was going to hit him over the busing issue. And that he was had, wrong. He had was not ridiculous. an answer anywhere near, anywhere near him. <laughs> I mean, it was it was it was bad. And there were a couple I, I other moments he was, where he was ready for camel on busing, and, and certainly Bloomberg wasn't ready for Warren on on, on the women, and the, you know people aren't ready. For, but there are things that Trump isn't going to be ready for. I think Biden can have Reagan-esque lines in his debates. You know, uh, you don't hit me with age; you're young and inexperienced, and all of that. Uh, I think he will have comebacks ready, and I think he will use them. Uh, and and it doesn't take a whole debate performance to beat somebody. It takes one or two sound bites that the media yeah. plays over and over. No, no, you're absolutely right. The media giveth, and they also taketh away. Uh, and Trump, I think, is going to learn that. That you know, they're, they're, at least I hope. I hope the media doesn't, uh, you know, continue their uh, uh, what they did in 2016, which was just horrible. Uh, so let me ask you this, because yeah. you know, you know, as I started off with, you know, I I think Clyburn's call to end the the primary yep. right now is a bad idea. I oh, think, it's ridiculous. I think the call to not have this debate coming up is a it's a horrible idea. And you, and you it's agree. not going to happen. The American people won't stand for and, that. And I, I'm with you. I'm, I, at least I hope. Um, how do you know, they've we... advertised Sunday, Sunday? They they can't say coronavirus is dangerous. They've already taken the the, the audience away. Yeah, I think that's going to be great. I I've, yeah. I've been wondering if they're going to have like applause lines or you know like you know like laugh tracks you know like like they do for <laughs> sitcoms. Well, I am concerned about the the formatting and what it's going to look like and how deadly. Silent and boring, it could turn into. That is a problem. Yeah, no, I'm. I'm I think you got to add some laugh tracks. The audience reactions are sort of like background music that spike things up. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You got to have something. Uh, but the question I've got is, you know, look at the end of this. It, it does look like it's over. It does look like it's going to be yep. Biden. Game up. Uh, how do you how do you get those Sanders supporters uh, to then? You know, go okay. You know, we we're gonna we're gonna vote for Biden. Uh, he's not our guy. He's not the person we wanted. He's he's not gonna push the policies that we want. But you know, he, he's you know he's not Trump. Uh, how how do you make well, that? Well, I'm gonna tell you, the, the kids. One of their motivating issue uh, was gun safety and school safety. Uh, I'm uh, hosting a news conference at the national. Pre- Actually, you're the first time announcing this at the national press club on the 24th with the March for Our Lives leaders. We're going to come in and talk about the gun issue and, and what needs to be done because it hasn't been done and, uh, and gun safety uh, throughout with, you know, with background checks and assault weapons and, and magazine, uh, magazines and what the states have done versus what the, the feds have done and, and all of that. That issue that Biden is very, very, very strong on uh, is, is a key motivator for kids. And the other thing is, is he's, got to be able to, he's got to be strong, strong, strong on climate. And he's got to invite the kids in and say how important it is to, to, to battle the NRA and to, and to beat Trump. And that's one of the issues that they really care about. Yeah. But here's the thing. You know, Joe's not going to take their AR-14s. Uh, well, he's not quite as strong as Beto on it in, 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 in takeaways. That's no, no, no. It, 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 did you see the clip of him at the, the auto factory where he got into the uh, – for? and I, I, I don't know why he got he into did, the, I, I don't know what you're – He's the guy who did. He's the he's the guy who no, no, made what the, the Brady Bill happen and have the ban of the assault weapons. He's got a record to prove that he's strong on that. But he got into an argument with a guy on a shop floor the other day, and you know, basically, yeah. you know, yelling profanity at him, uh, yeah. saying he's not going to take your AR-14s away. It's actually an AR-15, and this is where I go. You know, it's just Joe oh. being Joe. I know he's a gaff machine. Uh, but you know, how many of those can you Rick, have? Rick, mis- mislabeling a gun by a number is not going to make the election. I, I sure <laughs> hope not, man. Uh, but you know, I'm just. And I'm you're just, talking about a president who's done seventeen thousand lives oh, no. and a day, dude. I, I'm I'm with you on that. But here's the thing: there's a huge <laughs> difference. There's a an enormous difference. Uh, all the people who support Donald Trump don't care, and and I would argue a lot of them aren't even smart enough to know better. Um, we're I, not trying to change the 40%. We just want 60. Okay. That's the difference. And the, seriously, the middle, the independents, those are the ones that are outraged by the things that aren't racist and bigoted and the reasons that most people support Trump. Uh, those, are, those are the things that matter in America. And the, and the independents and the Democrats, uh, the, and by the way, there are fewer and fewer Republicans. People forget that when Trump came in, there were 32% of the country that were Republican. Now there's 26%. He yeah. has lost a quarter of his base. Yeah. 
Well, let's hope that that translate into not only him being swept out, uh, but also a number of those senators so the Democrats right. take the Senate back. Because to me, the Senate is the most important thing. I know everybody right. wants the White right. House. Uh, the Senate is, is where all the really, really bad stuff uh, can be stopped. And hey, we're going to need it anyway if we're going to move anything forward in that first year. Well, there's a real chance, even against McConnell and Susan Collins, uh, you know. Uh, and Lindsey uh, Graham. Lindsey Graham is, eh, I don't know if Jamie Harrison is capable. It's a five-point difference now. I mean, it would take a huge wave, wave, wave for, for that to overturn. Um, but, but there are enough seats out there, uh, Arizona, you know, and, and Colorado. There are enough seats out there. Hickenlooper is going to win. Uh, of course, uh, Doug Jones in Alabama nope. is, 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 is going to lose. So yeah. whatever we try to win, if we're trying to do plus two, it's got to be plus three and all of that. So it's, it's very it's not as impossible as it seems to have a wave election that and there's always surprise people that lose uh from leadership on down there are surprise people that that just lose when there's a wave election so it's not hopeless no nope. and from your lips uh the, 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 the Moscow Mitch goes back to Kentucky and and we yep. never have to hear from him again but Bob I yeah, appreciate Yeah Scarborough really uh, did a good contribution in in branding that didn't he Um did he did he do that Yes okay well, Yeah I, I I thought it was a, a couple of other people, but we'll, we'll yeah. what the hell? We'll give him credit for it. Yeah. All right, good stuff, uh, Bob. I appreciate the time, the thoughts. Always great, always great having your expertise and your knowledge. It was a pleasure, Ricky. It's so much fun talking with you. Thanks for having me. You as well, my good friend. Thank you so much, uh, Bob Weiner, Weiner and Associates News. You can check out their stuff. We'll get links out. Quick break. Right back. Stick around. You listen to the Rick Smith Show. Remembering that united we bargain, divided we beg. Rick Smith.